Well, of course, our favourite person to talk to each and every week and the reason we're in HD is none other than the wonderful Megan Kelly joining us from the United States. How are you, Rockstar? I'm so good. How are you? Doing my best, doing my best. Now, I'm stuck back in, you know, 1970s colour TV is good for me. You know, HD is good for you, right? That's sort of the way the technology <laughs> should work. Uh, now, look, Depends uh, on the day. Yeah. Before we get to politics and all the rest of it, can we just talk about one of our favourite subjects, that being uh, you know, uh, your old mate Megan Markle? Now, I noticed today, and there's all this website stuff, but I noticed today that she's announced a brand new podcast deal, right? And I, it yeah. just got me thinking about, you know, the princess in our life, you. Now, you started your own thing, you've built your own thing into millions of people around the world. Why can't she build something? She's just got to get paid by somebody else all the time. Yeah, it's so true. And no one's ever heard of this podcast uh, outlet that she's going to. As far as I could tell, they've got far, far lefties like Sarah Silverman and Samantha B, who Ugh. are loathed by everybody who is center or right of center. So this is what she's signing up for. She's declaring she's not just liberal or progressive. She's a far left progressive. Those are her new partners. Yeah, she can't build it because no one will come. She tried that. Let me tell you, from Spotify to this lemonada is a big fall down. She knows that. She couldn't get anybody else to pony up the dough. She needs cold, hard cash because she wants to fly private and she wants all the trappings of the royal life without having to work for it. And she does want to fly private and she is flying private on everyone else's dime at the same time as part of their rebrand, Harry's continuing to touting himself as an environmentalist. Okay, if you're an environmentalist, get on JetBlue. Stop with the <laughs> private flights everywhere because that's the only way they'll travel. And of course, she, another hypocrite, is calling herself a feminist who's going to shape the future. How? Because no one tuned into your first crappy podcast where all you did was lecture us on feminism and everyone hated it. Remember, she was so upset that she was objectified when she put on the tiny sparkly dresses on Deal or No Deal and they didn't want to hear her thoughts on nuclear codes. So it's a joke. She's not a feminist. She's only a Meganist. That's it. She cares about promoting one thing herself. Just ask Katie Weighty as she referred to Kate Middleton in her interview with Oprah, a low blow hit. Or ask Omid Scobie, Megan's stenographer, who took way below the belt hits at Kate in the, the book he just put out. She only likes one woman. It's herself. She wasn't very good to the queen. And now her partner in life, Harry, finds an opportunity to put himself back in the news. We talked about this last week. His father comes down with cancer and he flies immediately over to the UK. And within 30 seconds, he had released that back to the media. And even his father at this point is like, get out. He's there for 30 minutes. He insisted reportedly that he not be in the room with Queen Camilla. Camilla. She's probably the only reason he got the invite to walk in the door anyway. Um, he's called his father a racist. That's back to the Omid Scobie thing. Clearly those two were telling Omid that Charles is a racist. That was in the book as it was released. And then he tried to take it back. Oh, I never said that to the translator. Well, Omid Scobie did. Anywho, um, he gets kicked out and he has to go right back home. He had to stay in a hotel. He did fly private for or a commercial for that one. They, they want nothing to do with this pair. And so what that we have here is yet another attempt to use the royal name and the royal titles to make money, which is exactly what the queen asked them not to do. They've launched a new website, a new brand, to try to get more money because they think their problem is marketing, is branding. And they refuse, as always, to realize it's them. There's no amount of rebrand that's going to help them. It doesn't matter how much glitter they decide to roll it in. It still is something nobody wants to buy. Nobody wants to, to read and whatever fascination they have are in lives in the past. And the thing that they don't get, I, I think that they don't understand, particularly say about you know, podcasts, video, all the rest of it, right? Unless you're going to be really, I mean, proper open about your life, right? Like that sort of reality level, okay, too much information or let us into the madness of your life then that's not particularly interesting. And they're not really people that anyone would consider particularly insightful or, dare I say, sort of, you know, public intellectuals to actually tune into yeah. to, OK, how are they going to help my life? Like, these are not, you know, Jordan Peterson-like people. Oh, God. 
she didn't even mention them in the same breath. So <laughs> it, you're exactly right. They, Just trying to they trigger have you. no insightful commentary to offer on anything. No one wants to hear, unless they're going to be talking about the royal family, which is mm. how they got their Netflix deal. And it was interesting. You know, we wanted to see the behind the scenes stuff about the queen and so on. Um, no one's going to listen. So if they're going to talk about their lives and their thoughts on life, it's going to be more banalities. That's what we got the first time around. No one actually cares about what Meghan Markle thinks about X or Y or Z. We just want to hear them talk about the queen and what it's like to be a royal. Now they're out of that material, so we're going to be stuck with more lectures on which words we're not allowed to use, mm. according to who? Meghan Markle. Who cares what she thinks about what words I attempt to use in my life? Couldn't care less. This is why... Spotify wanted to get rid of them. This is why they were called the greatest grifters of all time uh, by Bill Simmons over at Spotify. They didn't live up to their deal. They weren't producing more content for Netflix. All these deals are circling the drain. So they went to the no-name far-left organization that signed her up. I guess we're going to get more drivel on feminism, according to Megan Marcos, done nothing other than get married. <laughs> That's her big accomplishment. Fine, I like being married, but it's not like, that's what a feminist does. We get married <laughs> and then we tell everybody about what we did as a married woman, thanks to our husband's money. Woo, me. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> you know, as, as important as marriage is, and obviously happy Valentine's Day, here it is in, in Australia from those who love you here. Yes. But uh, it's not landing on the moon. You know, like, like, it's like when these people go, it's like, you know, that's something that, okay, wow, really? Only this many? And how many? But, you know, anyway. Um, now, The View. Uh, Sonny Houston is one of the most annoying people on the most annoying show on uh, television in the US. And she's all about, you know, the far left stuff and racism and institutional racism. She does one of these tests and, oh, oh, what's in her past? I was really reluctant to do it because I just sensed that there could be something in my family history that would be um, disappointing. But what I found out was that my mother's family, while um, they are Puerto Rican, they actually originate from Spain. And the reason that they moved to Puerto Rico is because the slave trade mm -hmm. had been sort of canceled in Spain and then Curacao, and then they moved all of their slaves to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And so the, biz the family business, I had been told that they were printers and journalists, but they were in fact enslavers. Mm -hmm. Yes, it turns out her mother is white, which she claims she didn't know, and she's descended from slave owners. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> she's been ripping on the United States and, and the, our terrible past, and she's been demanding reparations for, you know, modern-day black Americans, many of whom had absolutely no connection whatsoever to slaves or slavery, but still, they, they need to get paid. And it turns out she's going to have to pay out. She's not receiving anything. She's going to have to pay it out. She says she stands by her demand. She wants the reparations paid. Okay, Sonny, you first. She lives in a multi-million dollar house. She make, she has a multi-million dollar job. Her son is at Harvard, I'm sure, because of her connections and her top-notch uh, education that she provided him in private school, undoubtedly. And she still thinks the country's unfair and needs to pay reparations to modern-day American black people. So it turns out that Sonny's mother who she thought was Puerto Rican, is white. <laughs> and she was mm -hmm. not, she thought she was black and Puerto Rican. And she's not. She's from Spain originally, and she's white. That Those are Sonny's words and Sonny's conclusions after going on with, he with Henry Louis Gates, who does, you know, this show on your ancestry. And she's talking openly about how disappointed she is and how she, she wished, this is why she never wanted to get this done, because she knew she would just be horrified if this were the case, because her mother had blonde hair and is lighter skin and has blue eyes. The horror that she might turn out to be white, the disgusting white race for a mom. I mean, it's the only Sonny Hostin or somebody like that in the American left can get away with this kind of talk. Can you imagine a white person being like, never wanted to have my ancestry checked because I was really worried I might have that one drop of black blood in me. The horror, the horror, I never, oh my God, I'm, I'm disappointed, I'm horrified. Now, you would be an obvious racist and called out appropriately. This is not even a footnote in the media that she said any of this.
Well, I mean, this is the thing. I've been thinking about this a lot in the past few weeks, right, which is that we know that these people are hypocrites, but it is amazing how hypocrisy does nothing to hold them back. Instead, they're able to sort of shapeshift and move their way through. And also, what about this garbage where she turns around and says, after learning all of this, she had to have a difficult conversation with her mother? A difficult conversation? What is the difficult part of the conversation? Right, I hear you're the shameful race. I'm so yeah. ashamed of you. For you got being the poison white. in I you. Can't believe. It. And now I find out I'm half white. Right, this oh. woman who's out on the view. It's it's actually so wonderful. I love the whole story. Both of our first two ser- stories I love. I love that Meghan Markle's coming out with another podcast for you and for me, not for Jan Pop. And I love that Sonny Hostin has been caught yet again in her absurd hypocrisy and that she's both going to pay the reparations and I suppose receive them. We'll look forward to that transaction at the checking account.